Filmer Abito, as I said, is the chief, chief executive officer. He founded Pierpont Communications, which is in Houston in 1987. He's an entrepreneur and started his career out at a Madison Avenue PR firm in New York before he started Pierpont from scratch without an office space, without a phone line. So um, I will, you'll love hearing about how he, how he built his business. Feel free to ask lots of questions about that for those interested in the field. Today, he runs one of the largest communications firms in the Southwest. He was named Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year in Houston in 2006, and in 2017 received PRSA's Houston Legacy Award. And I know some of you are in your own PRSA chapters in your schools. Um, prior to Pierpoint, Pierpont, Phil was a senior account supervisor at Robert Marson and Associates in New York City, where he managed major accounts, and you're gonna know some of these names, Spalding Sports, Sports Worldwide, Pillsbury, Levi Strauss, Dean Witter, um, and the Marriott Corporation. So uh, we've got a heavy hitter tonight, you guys. He is a regular on the networking scene in Houston, a member of the AMA, the American Marketing Association, the International Association of Business Communicators, PRSA, and Silver Fox Advisors. He's also on several community boards in Houston and is a past trustee of his university, University of Charleston in West Virginia, where he graduated as a member of SIGEP's West Virginia Zeta chapter. And he's still in touch with many of his brothers today. So uh, feel free, Bill's gonna talk with us, save your questions, Write them down. He's going to take Q&A after, and um, we'll go ahead and get started. Phil, I'll kick it over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Heather, and welcome, everybody. What a fun night we're going to have here tonight. And maybe we'll give away $1,000. You never know. It might be a, it might be a good idea if people pay attention. Uh, I am a professor, uh, been a professor now for about 32 years in the MBA program at the University of Houston. So I just had my class last night and I was sharing with Heather a little bit about my background. Uh, I was vice president and president of my chapter in uh, Charleston, West Virginia. And I still talk to my fraternity brothers here uh, some 40 some odd years later. Um, we get together on Zoom on the third Tuesday night and we just had a fundraiser where we raised money for the the school here last week. So that was a, a, a really nice thing to do for the school. So I'm gonna give you a little uh, presentation here about uh, chapter communication and reputation. So it's about 20 minute talk and then we'll take questions and uh, uh, go through everything from there. So let me see if I can advance, hold on, there we go. So tonight we're gonna to cover your personal communication skills, best practices that chapters do in communications. We're gonna talk a little bit about community relations, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about university relations, all designed for reputation management. Your reputation is really everything, and it's important for you to understand that everything you do in the communications area uh, is gonna make a big difference is how people perceive your chapter and the flexibility and freedom that you end up getting uh, on campus from university uh, officials. So let's start with you. How can you be the best communicator in your field, in your chapter and what you're trying to do? First thing, you gotta make communications a priority. So you really should try to take a class in communications uh, if you have a free elective uh, out there. You'll find that being an expert in communications is gonna make a huge difference in your career, no matter if you're going into engineering, or if you're going into business, if you're going into the medical field, whatever it is, the better communicator you are, the more effective you're gonna be. I remember I took uh, speech communications and that turned out to be one of, one of the best classes I ever took. Uh, because it really helped me in my career and the ability to speak publicly. And I actually have spoken at a conclave uh, one time in front of a thousand people in Chicago. 
uh, I learned very quickly that you don't tell a joke to a thousand people because sometimes it can fall flat. So that was a good lesson back then. Uh, but make communications a priority for you and seek a mentor or a coach. And that could be a teacher. You know, you'd be surprised if you go to a teacher that's in the communications department and, and told them, you know, I'd like to be better at doing my job for communications for my fraternity. Uh, you'd be surprised at how somebody would be willing to help with you or spend a little bit of time. The next thing is you got to always make sure you stay on message. And if you're going to prepare any kind of communications, just take a few minutes and jot down what key messages you want to get across and keep it very simple. The problem people have is that they want to tell everything and they want to go on and on and on. They do not simplify their language and they don't simplify their comments. Less is more, right? The Gettysburg Address was 272 words, two minutes long, one of the best speeches of all time. So you want to be able to do that. You also want to be able to know that you're engaging your listeners. And you can, if you're speaking in front of people, you can see how they're reacting when you're engaged. I can tell when I'm falling flat with my class, even on Zoom, when I see people not paying attention and not looking around. But look at trying to engage your listeners or readers, because you want to make sure that they are understanding what you're saying and that they are responding appropriately. You want to always take time to respond. You always want to be able to answer every single question that somebody has, no matter how long it takes, no matter how much effort you have to have. And if you don't know the answer to a question, it is always very acceptable to say, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to get back to you. A lot of people that get in the media, they'll get interviewed by a reporter and and say maybe a crisis situation and they don't know the answer to something. So they wing it and they kind of come up with an answer. Big mistake. You know, if you don't know something, just be honest about it and tell them that you will get back to them. You want to make sure you're understood. You don't want to bring any of your brothers for not understanding what you're saying. If, you, something, uh, if you're putting across a message or telling something and, and someone does something or, or challenges you along those lines, you wanna make sure that you're not blaming people for not understanding you. So it's always appropriate when you're speaking or sharing information to say, does everybody get it? Anyone have any questions? I'm happy to help out as much as I can. Listening is now the best skill you can have. A big problem people have is that they aren't good listeners. Practice listening. And some of us, like me, who, who's an extrovert, want to jump in and, and, and make a comment right away or talk over somebody. Don't do it. Try to listen. And by the way, the best thing you could do is pause. Just like I did right now. And it's a really difficult thing, but on Zoom, you'll be amazed because someone's going to fill that vacuum of time with something. So develop your listening skills and you'll be much better at that. Body language, so important. You want to make sure you're engaged with people, your hand motions, your gestures on Zoom. It's always about the lighting and the background of what you have. I still haven't put together my uh, premier background. I'm actually in our arts and crafts room at our house uh, today. But we got a bunch of people and everybody's working in different locations and doing different things. But body language is important and the way you handle yourself. And if you're enthusiastic about what you're speaking about, people are going to pick up on that and they're going to be enthusiastic. Eye contact, very important with an audience. And whenever I'm speaking in front of an audience, I'll walk around. I'll make sure I develop eye contact with individuals. Same thing when I teach one of my classes. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're not looking away or talking up in the air or turning your head and not engaging people that way. People get information and messages from people that connect with other people. So by looking them straight in the eye and getting your message across, your information is gonna resonate with those folks and it's gonna make a difference. Next one is respect your audience. Recognize that the message isn't about you or what you want. You really wanna care about the other people. You always wanna be thinking about their viewpoint on things. Cause most of the times people are saying, well, what's in it for me? Okay, what does that mean to me? So if you're communicating with your brothers and you wanna get them to do something, you're gonna to have to put yourself in their shoes and say, well, what does it mean for them? And how are they gonna see this to be to their advantage to do something? 
and make a big difference with, with a particular ask or if you're asking for volunteers or you're doing something like that. All right, so let's talk a few minutes about best practices by chapters. And I had mentioned to Heather that I actually traveled the country uh, to multiple universities where the fraternity had invested uh, thousands of dollars in fraternity houses, but did not have the membership. And so they would send me for about two weeks, two and a half weeks uh, to a chapter. Uh, I ended up spending a lot of time in Michigan State. I spent time in Iowa, Colorado, uh, different places. Uh, some of the places I had to stop hazing. I remember being at the Colorado School of Mines. They used to make people pledges walk across potato chips and tell them to trust them that it wasn't glass. Uh, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm sure there's no hazing now, right, Heather? No more hazing going on now. Uh, but the best cha uh, chapter practices for communication, regular transparent communication, daily, weekly, or monthly. Pick your poison. You know, you probably as a fraternity need to have at least weekly communications. But if you can do daily or you can do every other day, you'll, you'll be quite surprised at how engaged people are. And sometimes when you do da daily, it doesn't have to be a novel. You can send one sentence. You know, I just wanna update you on what's happening this evening with the chapter or, or our intramural volleyball team won the game last night. Whatever it is, uh, we used to uh, have a client whose CEO insisted on putting out a daily communication. And it actually turned out to be fantastic. Uh, you know, he had people produce it for him, but they put out a daily communication of what was going on in his company. Everybody felt informed right up to the minute because when people aren't informed, they're gonna fill the void with their own, uh, their own ideas. And sometimes those ideas are not gonna be the right ones. You wanna get words from chapter leaders. Whenever you're doing communication for the fraternity, make sure you're, you're get, you got information coming from your top people said in the words the way they would say it. It's very difficult to write a verse for a president of fraternity if they tend to use slang or they use certain terms or other things like that. Make sure people know that it's coming from the heart of the chapter leaders. That makes a big difference in making it validated. Uh, you want a complete communication from all aspects of the fraternity. Try to highlight even the, the most obscure officer in the chapter, or what somebody's doing that's not the most interesting thing. Always try to recognize people and acknowledge people for whatever they're doing in the fraternity. So you can do those types of things and that'll engage everybody and make a big difference. Regular profiles of brothers are fantastic. Just do a Q&A and highlight a brother. You could do a brother a month. You could do it every couple of weeks, a picture, something interesting. And it can be, you know, crazy stuff. What's their favorite food? What kind of gaming game do they like? Whatever the heck it is. Who would play them in a movie? I don't care. But just make it interesting so that people can really get in depth and understand what's important to the uh, brothers. So profile, regular profiles of brothers make a big difference. I'm also interested in inspiring quotes. I think that any kind of quotes that you can pull from major leaders and historical figures are always very good. When I was president of my chapter, I used to post uh, on our bulletin board, which is the way we communicated back then, something that I called points to ponder. And I would put a comment up, a quote from somebody, and I would try to tie it in to what was ever happening with the fraternity that week and try to inspire them uh, to do something. You obviously want to use social media effectively and constantly. And some of you, I'm sure you use text. Um, I'm sure that you, you, know, you probably have a Facebook page. You might use Instagram a lot. I don't know if you use Snapchat. I actually bought Snapchat stock way low. I sold it too soon because now it's about $70 a share. A share. I should have kept it. <laughs> but whatever social media platform you choose, make sure that you put your heart and soul in it. The mistake a lot of people make in business is they will pick multiple social media channels and they will not keep up with them. So what ends up happening is you end up getting a, a halfway effort and your social media uh, doesn't come through as effectively as it could as if you were just focused on one platform or two platforms. 
So consider that. And then last thing on here, best chapter practices is get yourself some media exposure. Write a write a, a editorial for the school paper, uh, do an event, do something unusual to get TV coverage. I have uh, done multiple things over the years to get TV coverage. Uh, I had a snowball fight in 80 degree weather. We had snowball uh, snow shipped in on an Air Force uh, jet one time when I was in graduate school in Florida. Um, uh, one of the big things I like to do, and I think I got this in an upcoming slide, is uh, we would serenade the uh, girls dorm at Christmas time. And the fraternity brothers would all come over to the girls dorm and we would sing Christmas carols. You wouldn't believe how effective that was. Another time we would serenade the president of the university's wife, bring flowers, gifts, and sing. And I was actually, uh, one of the things I did in graduate school is I was a director of 20 fraternities as the interfraternity council school advisor. And I had uh, each fraternity gave me four or five guys and we went and serenaded the mayor of the city. Uh, I was in Tampa, Florida and it was the uh, mayor of the city. We ended up getting several television crews coming out and covering that. Getting exposure, positive exposure for the fraternity is a, is a communication best practice and will serve you well. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about community relations and university relations. So form a committee for community relations. Get three, four or five guys and say, okay, I want you to be my community relations committee. Go out and meet all your neighbors, knock on their doors, introduce yourself, okay? And what I say is have a good neighbor commitment sheet. Give them a sheet that gives them a hotline where they can call you at any time about anything that's bugging them about the fraternity brothers. If somebody's doing something wrong, making too much noise, doing whatever, okay? It's very important to people. You wanna offer to help neighbors do anything they, they need help with. You need to cut a tree down, you need to move a stump, you need some help with something you're moving, I'll go get four or five guys and we'll do it. Um, I've seen fraternities mow grass and shovel snow for people and sometimes not even uh, ask the neighbors to do that. Just get out there during after a snowstorm, shovel somebody's driveway and you'll own them. They will do anything for you and be very, very pleased. Also, keep your property looking good. Very few fraternities do this. You know, keep your property looking good. Landscape, put some nice flowers out. Do something that the neighbors would say, wow, you know, the SIG apps really know how to take care of their property and making it clean and looking good. And your community relations committee can do that. And then if you want to make some money for the fraternity, offer a work crew at reduced rates. Just tell somebody, you know, we will come and move things for you or do handiwork, whatever you need. If you want to hire four, five, six fraternity brothers and the money can go to charity or the money can go to the fraternity. Um, but people always need help with doing something. And then university relations, okay? Brainstorm some good deeds for the school. Think about what you can do for the school that would make a difference. Maybe it's a cleanup, maybe it's a particular service project that the school has going on and you can wear your fraternity letters. I always say the best billboards are wearing your fraternity letters. Fraternity brothers should always have letters on. We used to do it every Friday but I think that's the best way to really put yourself out there and communicate that you're with the fraternity. Um, so volunteer and get, get brothers to volunteer and help out, maybe raise money for a school project or something that the school's doing, get a car wash or uh, whatever, you, whatever you're really good at doing to raise money, do some kind of activities like that. Um, offer assistance to school administrators you know, go to the leaders of the school and say, you know, if you need 50 guys or whatever you need, we want to help out with a project, a service project, and, and, and we would like to do our part to keep the university going and help out as much as we can. And you'll know where help is needed. You'll be able to see that and help can be needed. And the last one I put on here was serenade. I told you, serenade the university, the president of the university's uh, wife, take pictures call the media out, call the school newspaper out. You'd be surprised at uh, 
the reaction uh, that you could get on something like that. So in summary, what you want to do is work at comprehensive communications. That's going to serve you so well. You want to keep everyone informed. Remember, when people don't know what's going on, they're going to fill the void. Okay, so the more cooperation you have, the less frustration you're going to have. And the success of your chapter really depends on the effectiveness of your communication. When people don't know what's happening or aren't real clear about specifically when things are or when things are going on, that's when frustration sits in. And that's when people feel like you've left them out and they're not part of the group. And then good community relations will reduce your headaches. Your neighbors won't create any problems for you and it'll enhance your uh, chapter's reputation and make you the outstanding star of the Greek system. And that's really what you wanna be. You wanna be the chapter on campus where they say that you are the leader. I remember when I ran all 20 fraternities in graduate school, I was getting my MBA and I had to meet with the, the dean of the business school about something. And uh, I was in his office, he said, I know you, you're that fraternity guy the guy that's making a lot of noise around campus. And so all the things I did that I'm talking to you about were just things that stood out at that university because a lot of other fraternities didn't do those things. And so we stood out and, and, and my name got passed around throughout the faculty at the entire university. And that was a, a nice plus from that standpoint. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my slides and Heather's gonna make these slides available to you. So you'll be able to have a copy of them and. You can read them or share them or put them in depth. Uh, and with that, I will take some questions if anybody has any questions. So guys, you can either raise your hand, come off mute, ask questions um, directly to Phil. You can put them in the chat if you want to and I can moderate those, but either way, wanna uh, pick his brain and get his expertise. Um, I'll go ahead and get us started while you're thinking of your questions, guys. Um, so you mentioned being a good listener as part of a communicator, knowing that these are our vice presidents of communication and much of what they do is digital, whether that's email newsletters, blog posts, social media. Um, how can they be a good listener on, like through digital communication um, when, when you may not know if it's received or, um, but yeah, yeah, we'll start there. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a, that's a very good point. I think that you need to have and facilitate your social media with a Zoom or something that's going to be live where people can actually see people and you can have an agenda where you can cover topics that you think people people need to know about or want to be heard about. You know, there's no substitute for verbal communication. And so you got to give people that opportunity. And I realize everyone wants to text and everyone wants to do you know, the shortcuts with their phone and they do that kind of thing. But it, it doesn't have to be a long Zoom. You know, you can say we're going to have a 15 minute Zoom call on X date, just kind of reviewing what's going on, what's happening. You know, please participate and then hear people out if anyone wants to bring something up uh, or say something like that. So I think that's best to do it. The other part is when people are communicating via text or other social media tools, make sure that you understand them and respond to them and say, you know, do you mean this by what you're saying? You know, make sure that I am totally clear on what you're trying to put across in your text or your note, however it's delivered. And so a person actually has to acknowledge what they're saying um, to the other brother. We had one come in um, from Dan at South Florida and he was asking, do you have any tips specifically for chapters that don't have a house? You mentioned several about um, ways to do community relations, especially for those who do have a house. Any for those that may not? Yeah, I, you know, we didn't have a house in, in where I went to school. So we used to meet in uh, the university center and we would meet on a particular night. But we would always try to do things together as a group that would demonstrate that we are, we have a presence. So, you know, sometimes it could be clean up type things, pick up the campus or do something like that. Sometimes it would be like I'd mentioned, we would do like a serenade or things along those lines, but we would actually try to come out in force. And usually it would be either before the meeting, after the meeting would be a good idea where you could get people together and show presence. 
And that's why, like I told you, we would always wear our fraternity letters on Fridays or things like that. You know, that's one of the things you want to do is coordination of visibility. So you want coordination of visibility. So that way, everybody is wearing their letters on the same day at the same time doing something, or you're, you're, you're setting up a booth to do something. Maybe it's just a free lemonade stand. It doesn't, it could be anything. You know, and you can just brainstorm to do that kind of thing. But when you don't have a house, you have to have a physical presence. So you have to make an extra effort to try to do something maybe once a month that's going to have visibility and a physical presence, which is near impossible when we're not on campus because of COVID. But that'll eventually change from that standpoint. And I do like South Florida because that's where I got my MBA. And that's where there I was in charge of all the fraternities. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Other questions? Yes. Don't be shy, guys. Yeah, I've got one. Um, my chapter has like 160 people in it. Um, and what we've kind of noticed the past couple of years after people um, graduate, or not graduate, move on past their freshman year, um, the lot, or the uh, involvement goes way down. Um, so it's almost like all the freshmen are the only ones being involved. And with, you know, there's always a few excep exceptions. What do you what do you recommend to keep um, involvement high for those upperclassmen and initiated members? Well, the first thing is to get them involved. That would be one of the first things to do is to make sure that they know everything that's going on. The next thing would be to survey them. You know, uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, discreetly take attendance and find out this particular brother hasn't been to things in a month and a half. And then approach them. You know, you can approach them one on one, but you can also ask them, "Hey, I've noticed you haven't participated lately, or you haven't been involved in the last few things that we've done. Your attendance isn't there. Are we doing something wrong? Is there something you'd like to see? Is there something that doesn't appeal to you?" You know, the the big mistake that people make is they don't ask people what's going on. You know, how come you're not participating? And what would get you to participate more? So it is perfectly fine to do an anonymous survey of the brothers and say, do you like these activities that we do? What other activities would you like to see? What act activities need to be enhanced or bettered? What's going to get you to participate more? You know, we have 160 brothers and we tend to have 55% participation at any given event. We'd like to get that to 75 Okay, so what do we need to do? Are we not communicating well enough? Are we not letting you know far enough in advance when something is coming up? So try all those types of things, and I think you will end up seeing attendance and people uh, uh, improving from that standpoint. Because if, if you're not getting a lot of participation, one would argue that you're not putting on the right things the right way, and, and somebody's saying, oh, I don't really want to go to that. That really sucks, so I'm not going to participate. Okay, I've got another question for you. Um, since our chapter is one of the bigger chapters, um, for the VP Com is supposed to do role um, at chapter, and the best way we have came up with is just do a huge Google sheet and just type in if they're there or not. Um, we haven't found anything to do that uh, to do anything better than that, and um, it takes like the entire chapter for me to do that. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not really being able to pay attention to chapter because I'm trying to take role. Um, what do you see? Is there an app out there um, that you know of or any other suggestions? So you're trying to figure out something that everybody can do? Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, so like for our, when I'm taking role, I just go through and see if I see the brother and then mark if they're, if they're present or absent. Um, we thought like doing like a QR code, but then we're, we're um, skeptical about people sending that out to all their other friends and then people just checking in via that QR code, even if they don't. Um, actually come to chapter, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that when you have, what school are you at? I'm at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. I've been to Oklahoma State. Um, and actually, I participated in a rockathon with the Kappa Alpha Thetas, uh, if they still do that at Oklahoma State. So I, I actually, I probably was in your fraternity house. Yeah, we just built a new one. You may have been in the old one. We built a yeah. new one back in 18, I think. Okay, yeah, I would have been, it would have been the old one. Um, what's the beauty of what you have is you got an army. I mean, you got a lot of people. 
I mean, and so what I was describing before is saying, okay, we want everyone to wear letters on Friday or whatever it is. You can have a real presence and a much greater presence if you can get everyone to get together and, and participate together, do things together, take over a restaurant together, you know, show something that you have real unity and real support because that's going to serve you well in getting people to admire you. And that's what you want to do. It's one thing to have a, a giant chapter, but it's another thing to show what that giant chapter can do. Imagine 160 guys cleaning up something or 160 guys moving things. One of the best things you could do uh, that is done at my school uh, is when people move into the dorms. The athletes at my school help people move into dorms. Well, if you could get 160 SIG apps to wear their letters and help people, freshmen, move into the dorms, that is going to be a natural funnel for you to go ahead and get people to uh, join the fraternity. So think about doing things in a group in mass and getting people. Now, you probably won't get all 160, but if you turn it into a game and say, we are really trying to shoot to get 160 and one of your one of your alums are going to throw a big party if we can do something where we get every single member to participate and get our percentages up. You'll start seeing those percentages of participation go up. I think you're naturally going to see that because when COVID ends, people really, really long to be together. They haven't been together for such a long time. So you're going to get some of that. So if you get people to participate when COVID ends, I think you're going to get you're going to get a lot more activity and a lot of action. 